Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's take the grid pathfinding that I made previously and apply it to a hex grid. Honestly, I was wondering whether I should make this video or not because it literally is a super simple change, but I decided to make the video anyway so that it shows up in search results and helps anyone who is looking for specifically hex based pathfinding. If you want the 10 second answer, here it is. You just change the pathfinding grid to use the new hex grid, then you change which neighbors are tested, and that's it, that's all it takes. Now in preparation for this topic I already made two related videos, one covering how to test if a point is inside a hex, now that one isn't really necessary when it comes to hex grids, but still very useful to know how to do that, and a second video on making a hex grid, in there I take the regular square grid system that I've used in so many videos on the channel, I take that grid system and convert it to support hexes to be able to tell which one position equals a certain hex grid position. Then of course I also covered pathfinding in detail in another video, again that one is also based on the same square grid system. So here let's see how easy it is to swap pathfinding from a square grid to a hex grid. Over here I have my demo scene, I have exactly the same pathfinding that I made in that other video, the only difference is I changed the grid to work in the xz axis instead of xy, I did that just to be able to have a bit more fun in a 3D scene, but everything else is exactly the same as it was built in that video. So I have my simple unit, and I have my square grid, and I can click anywhere to tell the unit to move, and the unit calculates the pathfinding to get it to that position. So I click there, it goes there, it goes there, and so on. Now with a right click, I can also make a certain position unwalkable, so let's make all of these unwalkable. Now if I click here, and yep, there you go, simple pathfinding, avoiding the unwalkable errors. Okay, so that's the basic demo with fully working pathfinding on a square grid. Now let's swap it out for a hex grid. So here is the pathfinding script that we made in that previous video. Again, the only change I did was just swap the grid to work with xz instead of xy. So let's duplicate this script. We don't want to destroy this older pathfinding. Square grids are still insanely useful. So over here, let's just duplicate this and call this the pathfinding hex xz. Over here, let's change the name. So hex xz and then all of these references change them, so just this one and this one. Now swapping out the grid, so let's use the grid hex xz that we created in the previous video. So just replace all these references, so just find them all, this one, this one, this one, and that's it, no more references. Now doing this requires changing over here the path node as well, so let's also duplicate that one. So over here on the path node, let's duplicate it, and again just call it hex, and here change all of these, so the hex xz, so replace all of these references, okay, and for the grid, this one is grid hex xz, so just replace this one and this one, all right, that's it. So now back into the pathfinding hex xz, and over here, instead of using this path node, let's use the path node hex xz. So we just need to make sure to change all of these references, so change all of them one by one. Just find this one, find this one, over here, change, change this one, this one, this one, and these and a bunch more down here, so change all of them, and finally these ones. All right, great, so we have no more errors here, and we have swapped it to use pathfinding hex xn using the grid hex and the path node hex. And here in the editor, yep, the scripts are compiling, so everything is working correctly. Now let's do some quick testing. Over here I already have a game object with a testing script, and here just have a prefab reference for the square, the hex, and the unwalkable. Then on awake, simply instantiate the grid hex z, cycle through it to spawn all of the visual transforms and create the pathfinding and then on update listen to a mouse click then tell the unit where to go and on right click make the position unwalkable. So let's swap this out for a hex grid so let's go up here instead of using the grid xn the grid hex and the pathfinding swap it out for the pathfinding hex let's also rename this so hex by the way the shortcut over here is control rr that's the rename shortcut which remains all of the references so rename all of those and down here the grid hex xz, which is also used here, and the pathfinding hex xz. Okay, that's it, no more errors, and just over here when instantiating, instead of instantiating the square, let's instantiate the hex. Okay, so we should be able to see our hex grid, let's see. And yep, here we do see our hex grid. Okay, so far so good. Now let's do a quick test to visualize the pathfinding. So let's go to where we are getting a mouse click. Over here, let's go into pathfinding hex xz, and let's call the function to find the path. This takes a start worm position, so let's use vector 3.0, and for the end, let's use the mouse worm position. Okay, so we do this, and this returns a list of vector 3. So this is our path list, and then let's just cycle through it. And let's just do a debug.draw line on these positions. So let's go into the path list on this index, and let's go until the path list 
on the next index. And just up here, let's make sure we only cycle until the path count minus one. And finally, color dot green, and let's show this for just three seconds. This is not a log, but actually a draw line. Okay. All right, so we should be able to click somewhere and see a bunch of lines going from zero, zero onto the mouse position. Let's see. So here we are in game view. And now since we use debug.drawline, that means we need to enable gizmos to see it. So over here on game view, let's go up to the top right corner and click on gizmos to enable them. And now if I click somewhere, let's say I click in here, and yep, there you go, it does show the path. So going the path in there, going the path in there, and so on. Okay, great, so we can currently see the path being calculated. Except of course, it's not really working, so the path is going through weird places. So this one going in there is going through there, and that is not a valid position. So going in there should either go through there or through there. Okay, so the reason why the path isn't working is because the last thing we need to change is the algorithm itself. And again, the only change needed is really just getting the neighbors. Again, make sure you watch the pathfinding video if you want a quick refresher on how the ASAR pathfinding algorithm works. Basically over here on the find path function, we have a open list and a closed list. Then we cycle through all of the nodes on the open list. We check if it's the final one. If not, then we continue. We remove that one from the open list. We test all of its neighbors and so on. So all we need to do is modify over here this function, which returns the neighbors of a certain node. And here for the neighbors, we have the neighbors on a regular square grid. So we've got left, left down, left up, right, right down, right up, and so on. So for example, here's a diagram of a square grid. So let's say we are testing this position and we're going to look for the neighbors. So we're going to look on the right, we're going to look on the left, we're going to look up and also going to look down. And then obviously all the corners, so the upper left, the upper right, down right, and down left. So on a square grid, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight neighbors. Whereas over here on a hex grid, if we're testing out this node, then the neighbors are going to be the one on the right, the one on the left, and then we're going to have one that is straight above. So this one is position two, two, so two, three is going to be straight above, and two, one is going to be straight below. And in this case, we're also going to need to test this one and this one. So on a hex grid, we only have these two, these two, and these two, so only six and not eight neighbors. However, the other thing, which I also mentioned in the hex grid video, is that the neighbors depend on whether you are working on an even row or an odd row. So here on this odd row, you can see the ones above, you see the ones with x plus zero, so on the exact same x just above, and you test for the ones with x minus one. So that's what you do on an even row. However, on an odd row, like for example this one, if we were to test the x minus one, we would end up testing this one above. That is not the one we want. We want to test this one, which is x plus zero, and this one, which is the x plus one. So we need to be extremely careful here, just like we were very careful with the hex grid video. So here on the get neighbor list function, Let's first test if we are in an odd row, so bool for the odd row, and we just grab the current node and grab the y, which is actually the z since we're working on the x, z case, but sure. So we take that one, then we do a modulo of two, and if it is one, then we have an odd row, if not, we have an even row. And then instead of all these neighbors, we just test for different ones. So we've got the ones that are the same, regardless of being on an odd row or an even row. So you've got the x minus one, so the one on the left, the one on the right, the one down, and the one up. And then the only difference over here, if we are odd or an even row, if we are in an odd row, then we want to get the ones with an x plus one. And if we are in an even row, then we want the x minus one. Okay, so with this, all of the neighbors should be correct. Again, make sure you don't make any mistakes here. If you test the wrong neighbors, then the algorithm won't work. And finally, there's just one more minor change, which is down here when we are calculating the distance cost. For a square grid, we've got the difference between diagonal costs and straight costs. That is because mathematically moving over here, going straight to the right, that is a shorter distance than going from here to here on the diagonal. However, on a hex grid, we don't have that issue. All of those, those are all straight movements. So over here, we can simplify this or really just make straight cost all the way. So it's never a diagonal cost. However, there is still one last sneaky issue here. Like this, it's not exactly 100% correct because of the offset between the odd and even rows. So over here, the way we were getting our diagonal moves is the minimum between the X and the Y distance. And then the straight moves are simply the remaining ones. So going from 0, 0 to 1, 1, the minimum between those two, that would be indeed 1. So this would be one diagonal move. And then the remaining 1 minus 1 is 0, so there would be 0 moves. So that makes sense. In a square grid, going from here from 0, 0 to 1, 1, that is indeed just one diagonal move. But if we go back here onto the hex diagram, on this one, if we are going from 0, 0 to 1, 1, then with that logic, we have just one move, whereas in reality over here we have two. We cannot go straight like this. In order to go there, we need to go here and here. So using the exact same cost logic, that would not be correct. 
Now this is actually something that took me tons of time to figure out and I'm still not entirely sure how to correctly calculate a Manhattan distance on a hex grid. So for example, getting the distance from 0, 0 over here to 3, 3, how do I get 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? I tried tons of approaches, but there was always something wrong. It needs to take into account the direction, so going left and right, the number of odd or even rows in between the start and the end, and so on. So I tried lots of things and it didn't quite work, but then I realized that it's also not really necessary. I don't need to know that from here to here is a certain number of moves. The distance is really only used for a heuristic, which is really just a guess. So in order to get that guess, the simple way to do is just test the actual world distance, since we already have a super easy way of converting a grid position onto a world position. So over here when calculating the distance cost, instead of this we can just do something super simple. So we do a vector 3 dot distance, let's go into the grid system, then on the grid we get the world position, get the world position from this starting point, so a dot x and a dot y, then calculate the distance towards the b position. With this we have the distance, so let's just multiply it by the move straight cost. And since this expects an int, let's just do a math f dot round to int. So on all of this. Alright, so that's it. This will indeed give us a very rough distance, which is all we need for the algorithm to work. So let's rename this to give it a proper name, so it's not the direct distance cost, instead it's just a rough guess. So let's rename this and let's call it the complete heuristic distance cost. Then let's just see where we're using this function. And if we go up here onto the algorithm, we do see that we're using it to set the h cost of going from this node onto the end node. So that is correct. The h cost is the heuristic cost in the algorithm. But we're also using it over here for the g cost. But the g cost is not meant to be a heuristic. It's meant to be the actual cost. So this one that we use over here, this one must be correct. And this one is always going to be a straight move. It's always a straight move from the current node to the neighbor node. So over here we can just put the move straight cost and just use this directly. All right, so that's it. Again, the heuristic in the algorithm, this is just a rough guess. So that is why we don't necessarily need an extremely accurate heuristic like we did for the Manhattan distance on the square grid system. With this very rough, very simple heuristic, our algorithm should still be working perfectly. So let's finally test. So here we are, and if I click over here, and yep, it does take the exact correct hex path. I can click anywhere I want, and yep, it always goes straight through the hexes and never in between all dashes. All right, awesome. Now let's verify that it is indeed working by making some nodes unwalkable. Again, here in my testing script, I already have that logic. So I'm testing for the right mouse button. If so, then I get the grid object on the mouse wrong position, and I set it as unwalkable. Then I also get the wrong position of where I clicked, and I instantiate the unwalkable prefab. So over here, I can right click, let's make these positions unwalkable. So we're going to start from there and let's say go in there. And if there you go, it does go over there. So I can now make whatever path I want. And yep, there you go, it always finds a path. So finally, here it is applied to a character. So I can right click to make any nodes unwalkable. Then I can click and yep, there you go, the character does find the path and goes straight through the target position. So I can go anywhere, do anything. And yep, the character always finds a path throughout my hex grid. All right, great. Here is how the character is set up. This is based on the modular character system that I covered in another video. It just has this component, move position hex pathfinding. Then this function over here receives a target move position and an action when it reaches that position. Then just goes into the pathfinding, calls find the path and gets the path vector list. And then on update simply goes from position to position. So here it is on a bigger, more complex math. And yep, everything works. I can click anywhere and the character finds a path and goes straight towards there. All right, awesome. Okay, so that's it. As you can see, it's pretty simple to convert from grid-based pathfinding into hex-based pathfinding. Really just a few tiny changes and everything already works perfectly. The algorithm is really all the same, the only difference is just the neighbors. Now, like I mentioned in the hex grid video, the reason why I've been researching hexes is because it's the most requested topic on my turn-based strategy course. So now that I've done my research, I'm currently working on writing all the lectures, making a free update covering the complete conversion process. If you haven't picked up the course yet, then definitely give it a look. I worked really hard on making it an excellent course specifically to help guide you and take your skills from beginner to advanced. So if you're interested in turn-based strategy games or really you just want to improve your programming and game dev skills while learning how to write good clean code, then check it out. And if you already have it, then this hex grid update will be a completely free expansion to the course, hopefully within the next few weeks. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.